Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Solo King, a Korean 1v1 tournament here on Azubu TV. My name is Reed Rapid Melton. Joining me is Seth Kilios King, and we are getting into our losers bracket to determine the final player who will advance to join the players who have won here tonight. So the players who have advanced so far in the Solo King have been someday ganked by mom and ambition. So we'll have a uh, sort of round robin style between the remaining players who did lose their previous matchups. About them coming back on your stream here in just a second. Of course, you got a chance to at least glimpse the champion choices there uh, before we are actually going to get into this game. Hopefully, here in just a second. So stick around. We'll be right back. And just like that, here we are. So welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to our first elimination match of the round of six. It's Tucson versus Pure. About to get underway. And this is going to be one heck of a game. Uh, <laughs> Double Yasuo. All right. Now, this is a deliberate choice, so you can tell that there have been some communication. Uh, Tucson and, uh, and Pure, they're not on the same team, or you might say that they coordinated this maybe a little bit more colloquially, but uh, mm. <laughs> we're going to go Yasuo versus Yasuo in the first game of the day. I am hitting 45, 46, 47 seconds, so hopefully that means we're still synced up. Right in there. I'm, a, I'm back back in the uh, future a little bit <laughs> okay well hopefully it is just a little bit we'll have to see how uh yeah nothing too significant okay <laughs> this is so weird pure is like, pure is not respecting this rule he's like you get back to your turret and you get back there now no mercy from pure <laughs> yeah just gonna go ahead and just auto attack him a good little bit I'll work him down but nothing uh nothing gonna come of that whatsoever just some general General attacks, and of course, Chuds with his rocket jump, the staple beginning for him. <laughs> yeah, you never wonder about what Chuds is going to start with. So, uh, getting back into an actual 1v1, this is Doran's Blade versus Doran's Blade. Uh, Might have thought that we were going to see a longsword with three health potions, but the two health potions that you get back are not quite as good as just the straight up combat effectiveness that a Doran's Blade gives you. So, both Yasuo's. In the mid lane, flash ignite on both sides too. This is kind of a pride match between Pure and Tucson. Who is the better Yasuo? Who is the solo king? Well, we are gonna find out as we can see in the lane now. And the CSing has begun. Tucson with a massive three CS lead. He's got the uh, the Tucson <laughs> CS lead right now. <laughs> I just oh. mirrored ability usage on both sides. This is going to be crazy. If they both somehow manage to ult each other at the same time, I'm going to go bonkers. So we'll see if that is actually even possible. Um, I don't Super think guess. it is. We might not even get there as we are trading very aggressively this early on. Ignite already used on the Tucson pure. A little bit scared there. Yeah, burning that out as you see both of them just trading back and forth with these knockups. Tucson, though, so is just playing a very, very dangerous game as he's taken just so low right now. Oh, yeah, Tucson cannot walk back up there. He doesn't have to worry about Ignite, but that's one crit and he just straight up dies. Also, unfortunately, we didn't get a chance to see the rune and mastery set up. But one disadvantage that Yasuo players have is that you actually can't run critical strike chance runes. Uh, it's one of the rules of the tournament to help prevent the uh, the RNG from being too devastating. But oh my god, Tucson. Wow. Uh, he has to go back now. That means he's going to miss out on a cannon minion. And this might just be the disadvantage that loses him this game. Of course, keep in mind, no teleport on either side. Yeah, it's going to be a very long and slow walk back to the lane. So you can see it looks like Pierre going to go ahead and recall as well, though. Double the CS, too. Yeah. 16 to 8. That is a fantastic start for him. Oh, and Tucson only able to afford... Oh, this is crushing. Only potions, able to afford potions. It. 
The only thing that's really interesting here is you got a sweeper. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what the sweeper is for. I think he might have been looking for maybe an extra CS if, uh, if Pure had put down a ward. That or he wants to deny vision with it, perhaps? I don't know. <laughs> How? I, I mean... Maybe? You throw it over the... Over top of uh, yourself or whatever, and then it like stops the vision. I don't know. Ships, Interesting. Ships passing in the night there in mid lane. Both Yasuo is just zipping around. Uh, Tucson by far doing uh, getting the worst end of these trades is down an entire Dorian's blade, which is just crushing in the one v one matchup. Yeah, he's at such an advantage right now. It, you know, he's had the wave, wave advantage, in. too, so, I mean, Tucson was able to at least clear out that wave of minions. We'll see if he can get through another one and maybe go back to base, but, uh, yeah, he is significantly far behind. Yeah, he needs to back as soon as he possibly can to get an item, but even so, it's still just going to put him that much further behind. This is a really rough start for him. Ooh, misses that Steel Tempest, too, that might have given him a slight advantage. Oh, does get a nice knock up there on a Pure. Pure walking forward. Oh, no, he dashed through him, and he can't get back away. So this actually should Forces mean... Forces a flash. Yeah, flash forced out. Yeah, wow, just being absolutely bullied right now. And, of course, the CS lead just swinging right back to Pure. It was only... Jason can't walk towards his, uh, his rear minion line. Uh, because if he does, Pierce is just going to dash through the minions, get the jump on him, and uh, it's kind of all over from there. No flash for Tucson, but no ignite for Pure for a few more seconds. Yeah, a few more seconds might be all that Pure needs, though. Tucson playing a very dangerous game. I thought he was going to commit right there. Not quite. Windwall will come out and will stop that tornado from getting the knockup. Maybe that damage. But, oh, we might have a fight on our hands. Okay, uh, level 5 versus level 5. No level 6 is there. Is the Ignite coming out? Knock up! One more auto attack and... Wow! Oh my goodness, he just barely missed it. Tucson somehow makes it out alive. That Steel Tempest range is oh notoriously short. Able to walk right out of that barely. One more tick of Ignite as well would have finished him off. That was so close. But that is just, uh, you know, a, a testament to how hard of a time Tuzin is going to keep having in this matchup against Pure, who is just absolutely dominating. As we can see, Tuzin now with three Doran's Blades, but nearly 20 CS behind. And Pure, Pure with the cloth about, armor. Yeah, thought about buying boots there for a second. Boots wouldn't be a terrible decision because it would allow you to chase your opponent, but you have to go for the combat stats in what is going to be such a clutch uh, you know, 1v1. You're, you're never going to pick up a kill as a Yasuo, just barely. It's always going to be, you know, you guys just run at each other, and kind of the classic samurai duel. It's like both players run at each other, and one of them dies. <laughs> the other receives an honorable death. And an honorable elimination from the tournament. Uh, if yeah. they lose one more game than this one. Okay, nice wind wall there. Here, uh, we'll have that spell down. So if Tucson can get up another wind wall or another um, another knockup from the Steel Tempest, we'll be able to go in on this. Level six versus level six, so those ults are going to be very, very crucial. Yeah, now that we hit this point, this could be what Tucson needed to, you know, swing the game back. As far as damage goes, they are pretty much even. That slight level advantage for Pure, but he'll be. Hitting seven very soon for Tucson. It's a turret shot, however, here. And a lot of damage coming out onto him. Yeah, Pure does not have Ignite. Tucson does. Mm. So if Tucson can get the knockup, no, there it is. Reggaeton. There we go. <laughs> yep, and that is a. Uh... Wow. Yeah, just well played by uh, Pure here. Goes to realizes how much of an advantage she has over top of him. Nice knockup. Windwall doing absolutely nothing for Tucson. Gets thrown down. Um, but yeah, Pure picking up a win. I guess you could say that was Tucson's last breath. Da -da. Anyway, that's going to be game number one in the books. Game two should be coming up here in just a second, but this is elimination match. If you lose this best of three, you are out of the Solo King. Winner 
doesn't get a trip to the finals just yet. They will have to face the winner of our second best of three series that will be coming up a little bit later on. So, Still, uh, still a chance to advance, but this is a round-robin matchup, so mm. you'll get a chance to uh, play every single possible combination of these last three players, and the one that comes up with a better record will advance to... Uh, Play in, uh, in I think in Sunday's match. It's on the fifteenth, yep, or no, it's on the eighth. I was like, wait a second, <laughs> going a little bit too far in my week. Yeah, it's on the eighth, so uh, we'll have Sunday, ganked by Mom, Ambition, and the winner of this final best of three, or not final best of three, final round robin, final three best of threes. There you go. Yeah, I'm hoping that we're gonna keep seeing uh, the interesting matchups like this. The double Yasuo is always really fun because it's such a mechanical uh, matchup. You know, double Lee Sin would also be excellent. I wouldn't mind another dodgeball match either. <laughs> but uh, anything but double ADC. God. Yeah, double ADC can <laughs> be a little bit rough, especially when it's like a, that blind pick third game mirror match, Caitlyn versus Caitlyn. We've had one of those already and it was one of the longest games of this entire tournament, so... Uh, yeah, double ADC can be a marathon match, but when it comes down to it, Yasuo 1v1s are pretty exciting, too. Yeah. Much less of a tennis match like double ADCs are. So here we go, game number two underway, and, um... Okay, hmm. We'll have to see where Tucson wants to go. That's, that's not gonna make it through. So far with the hovers, we might be having <laughs> a double ADC. You know what? I did not realize these are actually best of ones. That was. Uh, that oh, was... you're right. That was. Oh yeah. OQ moved in now. I all I looked was at it was two cents. So oh wow. Okay. So best of ones and the player with the best record will go out on top. So. All right. Well, that's. I guess that's one way to do it. Uh, so it's two cent versus OQ blind pick. So this is uh, this is an interesting way to decide the last player in the tournament, I suppose. Neither one knows what the other is picking. Do they go with the Caitlyn versus Caitlyn? Deucen is picking up Draven, or at least thinking about it so far. 20 seconds left for OQ to choose. I feel like that would be one of the first Dravens that we've seen, if I'm not mistaken. I don't believe we've seen one, at least not in the latter half of the group stages. And there it is, it's locked in for Tucson, so oh, we will right. see Draven versus question mark. Is it Caitlyn? OQ. Yes, it is. <laughs> All right, there we go. Not going to go with that misfortune. Misfortune into Draven would be pretty crazy. But <laughs> it's uh, it's definitely a better option to pick the Caitlyn here. OQ, go with the sure thing. Lost a very narrow two series, uh, two game set versus Ambition, and now he is looking for blood. So Tucson. He's made its way this far into the tournament. It'll be interesting to see what he can do versus Oki. Of course, also blind pick means that neither one of the players knows exactly what they're facing up against until now. Yeah, they get onto that loading screen, and that's the, uh, like I said, that's either the Eureka or the damn it moment for these guys. How do you think this matchup's going to go? I've, uh, I haven't seen Draven <sighs> played competitively for a while, at least versus Caitlyn's. Um, it's so... <sighs> I don't know. I have to. I have to mull it over. I'll mull it over while we look at these runes and masteries. All right. So for Tucson, he's got that uh, same page he went with before. He has armor, attack speed, HP, and uh, physical damage. Now for his runes or his mastery setup, no points in anything that doesn't matter, like dangerous game. So pretty standard there. And now we're gonna go check out OQ. 4.5% and I can only imagine that that's lifesteal, but it's not. Okay, so it's not lifesteal. That's attack speed because he only has one of those, uh, or a couple of those, you know, one of those quintessences, a lot of damage in there instead. No points in utility for mana regeneration. Nope, it is just the 2190. Same exact setup that we saw on our other room page. Three points in Warlord as well. Yeah, so yet again, opting to go for the three points. Which is a little bit more unique from what we see, but uh, if it works, it works. So we'll have to see if it works. 
Let's be careful moving this next one, but I've I, I've been I've been thinking about it. And I'm indifferent. You're indifferent. I uh, it's uh, like you said this is a matchup that we really don't see too often. I feel like as long as Draven can manage the axe catching, as long as he can consistently be getting his axes, um, he should be okay. But the problem with that is if he's if he's constantly going for axe catches, that's going to give a very clear target for um, harass because you'll know, you know, as the enemy, you know where the axes are going to land, so you can direct your abilities at those. Well, I guess uh, the, the downside for Draven is that he doesn't have a passive, because if he gets a kill to activate his passive, he's already won the game. Uh, but That's the, also true. He has yeah. that one ability. Uh, on the other side, uh, for, for Caitlyn, might not have an ultimate if she uses it too close if uh, he gets stopped by the, uh, the Whirling Blades. So maybe an opportunity to or stand aside. We'll see how it works out. Let's get in the game. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Solo King. We're in, we are in our best of one blind pick elimination matches to determine our final player that will make it to join the likes of Ambition, Someday, and Ganked by Mom in our grand finals that will be happening on the 8th. So if you haven't followed the channel yet, go ahead and do it. Stick around for our round robin matches here tonight. OQ versus Tucson, the next one up on the docket. My name is Rapid, with me is Achilleos, and we'll be getting into the lane phase here in just a second. Yep, as we can see, actually, OQ going for the cloth. Man, OQ does this all the time. He Why? just really, he really enjoys the safety. And this is just extra surprising, because he's playing the Caitlyn. He has mm -hmm. the ranged advantage. I guess he's just that uh, worried about the spinning blades uh, damage. Well, theoretically, if you have exactly the same attack damage, and one person and, and somebody hits you and you hit them back the only problem is he might not have accounted wait, i'm not sure why he's doing this there's he's, he's just losing the ma okay <laughs> there's not a lot of mystery there you lose when you get hit by those spinning axes now draven doesn't have a short auto attack range by any means but the biggest problem is that you know he actually has damage he's got that life steal in lane as well on the doran's blade so OQ needs to get enough of an advantage off of this lane phase so that he can go back to base and not be behind a significant amount of items. Uh, we saw that in the last game. Um, the Being behind just one Dorian's Blade is a huge disadvantage this early. Yeah, it really spells disaster for you. This is, uh, this is the type of game where you need to be even or above anything other than that, and you're likely going to lose. We'll have to see if OQ is able to utilize Caitlyn to the best of her abilities. And get some harass in on Tucson. So far, they're mostly just opting to go ahead and CS. Pilt over Peacemaker does come across. But, Man, every right. single one of these axes that hits OQ is oh just going to be ridiculous. And but watch Tucson. He's just going to walk up on him. Like, OQ cannot trade back in that lane. But with the, the, the advantage that OQ does have is the sustain advantage. So he will have the ability to just sit back in his turret, play a little bit more passively, use that range for some safety and pop more potions than Tucson has. Of course, only came to lane with one. Wow, that pilt over Peacemaker did not look like it hit. That was pretty <laughs> close. And even though Tucson does straight up one more more damage, you can see that sustain starting to kick in. Yeah, it's uh, turning it back on its head, chugging those potions as much as possible. Actually, ooh, a good amount of damage coming out here. Oh. Oh, man, if that was a headshot, OQ would have flashed in on that. And it is teleport flash the summoner spell choices for both AD carries. Yeah, probably for the best. It's the staple uh, for your summoner spells. Definitely the safest that you can go. Of course, we have seen barrier taken against uh, the Caitlyn, but they were going into this blind, so he didn't necessarily know that it was going to be 
against Caitlyn. Ooh, and Tucson comes back to lane with a crystalline flask and nothing but a crystalline flask. That mm. is, uh, that's not going to cut it. This is a Doran's Blade by, yeah, there for OQ. He'll teleport back in and... I mean, Doran's Blade versus Doran's Blade, but OQ's got that cloth armor. Now you start to realize, oh, CSing that last second creep with a... Uh, Peacemaker. But yeah, this is where you start to realize that uh, the effectiveness of the cloth armor. He got enough of an advantage in lane to where now he's even on aggressive items, still has sustain from just potions and a cloth armor to make these trades go further in his favor. Yeah, so some good foresight by OQ. Understanding this matchup and how it could go for him. He's trying to utilize these headshots to get some damage in, but has to opt for the minions instead. Ward not going to get taken down here. Ooh, close, but no cigar. And it is a uh, warding totem for both players, so no uh, no crazy shenanigans. Like, getting an extra CS off of a ward. <laughs> Might see Tucson buy a uh, sweeping lens when he goes back to base. <laughs> that would be our second one today. Just a lot of uh, wards and then the scrying orbs. So I'm actually kind of surprised that we don't see a scrying orb coming out here for OQ yet. I suppose he could opt to buy one a little bit later once he gets that ace in the hole. Okay, thank you. Direct the camera. Teemo is cute, <laughs> but also back in base. But uh, so for OQ, he just has to play this lane, kind of slow and steady wins the race. Oh my. Ooh. Tucson is probably pretty dead there. Oh, Forrest is out that flash. Yeah, good. not gonna risk getting hit by that and killed. Yeah, this is really bad for Tucson. Actually, wow. Oh my god, he killed him with a 90 caliber net. That <laughs> is some style points right there. Yeah. OQ. Fancy <laughs> feet by OQ. Alright, Just... here we're gonna get a quick instant replay of this. We got the flash. Auto attack, 90 caliber net for the kill. Oh my god. All right, OQ <laughs> putting the cherry on top there at the end. Picking up that kill on a two set and moving one game closer to the uh, the finals of the Solo King. Yeah. Now, if I'm not mistaken, OQ will play pure for the last spot in the tournament. So we'll get a chance to see if that is in fact the case. No guarantees. Still a little bit new to this uh, round robin elimination format, so we'll see what's going on. <sighs> Shouldn't take us too long to find out what's going on. We just gotta wait for them to get set up in that next game. But wow, so the dream is not yet dead. Rapid, you may very well see OQ right back in. I mean, I did believe in OQ from the very beginning. Uh, <laughs> I was a little bit more skeptical about Gank by Mom. Of course, he did have to play against Faker, but uh, mm -hmm. won that matchup 2-0, and now coming into uh, the finals, well, he's already into it. He uh, he took the easy route, winning his 1v1 previously, and now uh, for OQ, Dream is still alive. Still balanced on the narrowest of precipices. Precipices? I, <laughs> I, guess, I believe it's precipices, but... <laughs> Edges works as well, much more fluid and easy to say. But yeah, still has a little has a little bit of a ways to go before he's out of the woods here. But we'll have to see what's gonna happen. I just want to see this next uh, this next best of one. Of course, their best of one. There are blind pick matches, so you don't get a chance to know what your opponent's bringing at you. We've seen AD, AP champions, uh, even some tank champions work. Uh, saw a pretty impressive tank scion game earlier. Uh, was against an AD carry and just didn't AD care. He uh, <laughs> he just bought Doran's shield level one and had so many tank stats that he just didn't take damage. Cleared the wave instantly and said, hey, now you guys gotta go kill the minions. <laughs> I believe he won, he won that matchup, right? He did, he did. So We have seen a couple of Scions just because of how tanky, how much damage he can resist. Um, but it is a different style of play, and it definitely takes a different player. So for OQ, yeah. you should probably see nothing but uh, nothing but AD carries here. So let's go ahead and get into our last match. Uh, I believe it should be coming up on your screen here in just a second. Um, 
we'll decide the player who will join the rest of the three winners in uh in the finals of course that is on the 8th and if you haven't done it yet make sure to hit that follow button right down below the screen i'll let you know when we go live with the solo king grand finals on the 8th so you don't want to miss those also do want to give a quick plug to our um uh, the charity that the uh, Solo King is supporting, you can scroll right down below the screen and uh, see it is Extra Life. They provide support for children's hospitals across the nation, so make sure to go ahead, click on that, and it'll take you to some more information about that, as well as uh, the donation link, which is how you can show your support for that. We definitely appreciate that. So let's go ahead and get into our final matchup. It should be coming up on the screen here in just a second. And there we go, OQ versus, versus Pure. Pure. A 1v1 blind... No, that is a... That's yep. locked in. That, that is, is a, a lock in on Urgot. I'm All not right. sure why, but Urgot is always, like, one of those characters that you just happen to always see in the 1v1s. He's not a bad 1v1 champion. Uh, it's, the, the problems are he's very immobile, so if you play him, like, top lane, he just gets ganked a lot. Mm-hmm. But wait, what? Holy crap, what is this matchup? It's Urgot versus Elise. <laughs> We've seen an Urgot played previously, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, let me see if I can remember who played that Urgot previously. Um, it's not coming to me. It's one of the Group C players. I forget exactly who it oh, was. Oh, it was, uh, was Bengi. Bengi played it versus Peanut. And uh, I wound up winning that matchup 2-0. So we've already seen one Urgot. I'll have to see if we can see what uh, what Elise does. Uh, zero Elise games so far. And I'm not sure exactly why you'd pick Elise. She does have some sustain off of Skittering Frenzy. But as a, a melee champion in spider form, I wouldn't expect to see her be in that form all that often. Also, landing cocoons in a lane phase matchup is still going to be kind of difficult to do. Yeah, this is uh, a really interesting pick, and probably the most interesting one that we're seeing today. Hmm. The Elise pickup. One <laughs> trick that you could do if your opponent is behind his turret, you could go for the turret dive, get off your damage, and then repel off to the Wraith camp to get uh, to get out of turret range. That actually, that's a good point. That would be a very flashy play to make, a good way to... So, let's check this out. For OQ, he's gone ahead and picked up runes I can't understand. Uh, I, I saw some armor, attack damage, and other. So, interesting to see what he's got here. Maybe some mana regen mixed in there. Uh, for mastery, as you can see, spell weaving, blade weaving, both picked up. A very essential part of a balanced Urgot breakfast. You look at these masteries made a little bit more sense that time so a lot of uh, a lot of penetration and as far as okay that's ad and ap picked up this is uh first hybrid elise i have ever seen <laughs> uh yeah i guess he's trying to balance the damage between well even then it doesn't really make too much sense so they try to balance the damage between the uh, the melee attacks with the spiders and uh, well, well, just the damage in spider form and yeah, then your other abilities. But all of the abilities scale off of magic damage. Yeah, they scale off AP, so you'd expect the AD just to either make lasting a little bit easier or to trade in human form auto attacks as well. Um, but not all inning on the AP like you'd expect. I thought he was going to go for some super cheesy, like start out the game with like 80 ability power. And then just walk up and one shot the guy with the with your execute double execute damage. Uh, not something quite that crazy, but it is going to be an interesting matchup. And our last matchup of the night will be Pure versus OQ to determine the last player make it to the Solo King Grand Finals. Looks like we'll be seeing that matchup start here in not too long. So make sure to stick around. This will be the last match of the night. So if you made it this far, then thank you for joining us. Let's go ahead and get into game.
And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Solo King here on Azubu TV. My name is Rapid, with me is Achilles and Pure and OQ. Of course, we don't get to advance on to the grand finals. We're gonna leave that up to them. Yeah, this is uh this is the match that is potentially deciding it all for these guys. Uh you know, figures out if they're gonna move forward or not. Of course, we have uh, two interesting choices of champions coming up this time. Our first Elise that we're seeing in this tournament, and uh, our second or third or not, maybe? I forget exactly how many we've seen so far, but it, it's not too many. There's few and far between. And you know what's uh, good to side this matchup, Achilles? The number of legs. So, OQ was like, <laughs> all right, Legs win it, so he's, he's never skipped a leg day in his life, and he has got four of them. So, four legs versus two, that's going to win. Unless Pure transforms into spider form, then he's got eight versus four, double the number of legs, and, uh, of course, that would then uh, win the matchup, of course. So, we'll have to see how that works out. Spider versus <laughs> spider crab thing. Crab, yeah, crab got. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't have the crab got skin. Oh, well, unfortunate indeed. indeed. So, a no crab got skin, but we do have a victorious Elise. Not quite victorious yet. <laughs> Wait, that was, uh, that was the, um... I think that's victorious Elise. I'm yes, not mistaken. Okay. Not not up on my Elise skins. Uh, Elise somewhat out of the... Uh, How the dare meta. you? She came back for a little bit while, uh, while sustain was so essential in the jungle. You used to see a lot of Elise uh, being mm. played, but has uh, taken a trip on the retirement bench. So let's go ahead and see how this works out. First Acid Hunter of the game does land. Yeah, training back some auto attacks, goes into spider form, leaps forward. Oh, gets... and those spiderlings actually deal in a decent amount of damage to OQ. Yeah, I guess that would be the AD, the hybrid build coming in here. Of course, uh, you know, you do need to cast more abilities to get more spiderlings back up each time you transform. So we're going to see her throw out the... See Pure throw out the Nero Toxin, jumps back in. Doing some good damage. Yeah, but... Oki really needs to hit level 2 before he goes in for these trades. Um, while he does have... The, the big thing about Noxie and Corrosive Charge, which should be his second ability picked up here... No, goes for the Terror Capacitor. So just wants that shield mm -hmm. in lane. Um... It's not really going to do much if you put it on while you're not taking damage, though. So, and, and kind of interested to see why he didn't go for the uh, the ability to have his missiles lock on. Like, that's one of the big reasons that you pick Urgot, is so that you can hit the other guy while he can't hit you. It's, it's, uh, it's rocket science. Yeah, it's, I guess, a bit of a... I'm trying to think of the correct word here, but a miss worry for OQ. He was more worried about mitigating the damage that he was taking rather than getting the damage that he needed to fend pure off so i guess it works out for him either way he doesn't take too much more damage he does have that level three doesn't get the lock on but there's level three as well for pure and i guess one one option taking that shield the terror capacitor does give him is it means that he's gonna win a 1v1 trade no matter what uh the all-in mm -hmm is made even less effective. And oh, there it is. Ooh, Noxie and Corrosive Charge down on Pure behind the turret. Does mean that OQ can't walk near the turret because uh, you take turret aggro from it. Yep, like he just did. <laughs> yeah, so it doesn't want to uh, have that happen. But ooh, rough job CSing at turret. Now OQ up double Pure CS. And this is the last game that matters. You win this matchup, you make it to the grand finals. Ooh, Repel trying to get in onto there just to avoid that Acid Hunter damage. Yeah, throws a cocoon, doesn't land. Would have been, uh... Well, probably wouldn't have been able to make too much of a play off of it at this point. Pure is just very low. No potions whatsoever. Completely burned out of those. And we might have to see him back soon, but he doesn't have teleport. He has actually flash ignite. I don't know if we touched on that earlier, but... Really, uh, you know... Running for the all-in, but he's just really not able to find it at this point. Coon lands, but yeah, nothing coming uh, of that acid hunters. With those lock on just see what what Pure shredding. is fighting for here is more than just winning this one v one and being the solo king. Um, maybe there's like a deal that he gets Kane's spot on the roster. Whoa, <laughs> flashes that Noxie and corrosive charge. He's gonna have to take an early trip back to base. Keep in mind, it is flashing night for Pure. 
So no yeah. teleport. He's going to have to walk his way very, very slowly back to lane. Yeah, there's really nothing for him to, to be able to speed up his return. Nothing that he can leap to. So you can see OQ does go back as well, comes in. Teleports back. Double Doran's blade now. There's just one Doran's ring pickup for pure. A couple potions will help him sustain a bit more, but he's going to be taking that much more damage from OQ's Urgot now. This... Good. Unless we get some flashy plays coming in from Pure, this could already be in the bag for Okio, who's uh, looking quite good right now. Yeah, it's double Doran's items for both players, but by far the more uh, the the more solidified stance in the mid lane there for Okio. Not only does he have Terror Capacitor, he's got Barrier as his uh, last remaining summoner spell. Yeah. That's, and with uh... that much safety, there's really no way Pure is ever going to get a lot of value off of these. Uh, double execute damage from uh, toxic venom and uh, or toxic uh, neurotoxin, neurotoxin, yeah. and venomous bite. There's, there's, there's also there's confusing. Toxins, there's doubled there's up venom. <laughs> there's all kinds of craziness going on here. Level six versus level five didn't quite flip him into turret range. OQ eating a lot of damage there and still didn't go for the barrier. Same yeah, still holds on to it. Rainy day. Yeah, so burns out the ignite. So it doesn't have that. That's gonna cancel a lot of Pure's aggression now. This is gonna allow for OQ to just go ahead and keep shoving up the lanes. We can see now 52 to 27 for CS. Oh wow, yeah, big oh, difference in Decimating. Well technically it's not one tenth of the CS, so it's not actually decimated Achilles. Oh, this man right here with his... For shame. Pocket. For shame. <laughs> All right, so six versus six. No ultimate, though, for Pure. is going to be a kind of a disadvantage. He's going in. He's got uh, no minions on his side. It's three to one as far as the minion battle. There's the barrier. There's the kill. It's OQ. Grabbing yeah. his... Uh, the, the last kill that mattered here in the semi or uh, in the round of six, the Solo King. You can just see, look at that damage. He doesn't have to worry about missing Acid Hunters. Just hits him point blank. Hits the barrier for moral support, and there it is, OQ, with a win over Pure, will be the last remaining player to advance to face Someday, Ambition, and Ganked by Mom in the final four, the semifinals.